If you want your artwork to stand the test of time, then this video is for you. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Artist at Play, and today I am going to talk about five things not to do if you want your artwork to be archival. Now, I just want to put a disclaimer. I am fully aware that there are plenty of artists who are not concerned with the longevity of their work. They're just interested in creating and the process of creation and things like that. And if that's the case, this video is not for you. And I'm also fully aware that some artwork is made specifically to be temporary and that's okay too. I know that the impact of that art comes from being temporary. And so I'm not talking about that kind of art. However, I am here to explain this to people who are concerned about their artwork standing the test of time. Some people see their artwork as their legacy. Other people just pour their heart and soul into it and they really, really would be very disappointed if after all the hours of work they've put into an art piece, it were to fade or crack or discolor or anything like that. And then of course, there's those of us who are selling our artwork, who wanna make sure that we have a quality product that we are giving our clients and that when our clients invest in us and invest in our art, they're gonna get a product that is not gonna fade on their wall, that's not gonna crack and not yellow over time. And so that's why I'm doing this video. I started as a self-taught artist and I wish that I had known these things when I was first starting out because it would have saved me a lot of heartache. Okay, so the first thing that I want to mention that I don't think you should do if you want your artwork to be archival is do not use fugitive colors. Now, if you are familiar with my channel and familiar with me, you have heard me talk about light fastness numerous times. And light fastness refers to the stability of a pigment or a color when it is exposed to light. Some pigments will fade very quickly when exposed to light and others will last over a hundred years in museum conditions. And as artists, we actually have information out there on the colors that are out on the market from most of the brands that we buy from. And so you can look at these things ahead of time when you're thinking about purchasing or using your supplies so that you can make sure that the artwork that you are creating is not going to fade over time. Every big name art supply company typically does at least their artist grade products are tested either through the ASTM testing or blue wool testing. And it can be a little bit confusing because each supply company will put their ratings a little differently on their products than others. So you just kind of want to look at that, study the company that you're buying from or that you're using and figure out how they rate theirs, how they've done their testing, and then go from there when you're choosing your colors. And I will link some resources in the description below so that you can learn more about ASTM testing and more about the blue wool scale and how they differ. I'm not going to get into that here because that's a whole other subject that will take a long time. But basically, I just just want to say pay attention to your light fast ratings if you want your artwork to stand the test of time. And a couple of things that I have learned over time through working with color for so many years is that neons are almost always fugitive, which means they will fade very quickly. They will not stand the test of time. They are fun colors and they are great and exciting to work with. However, neons a lot of them aren't even rated because that's how low of a light fast rating they have. That's just kind of a general rule of thumb, neons fade. It can also be very difficult to find pastel colors that are light fast as well. And I'm not talking about the medium pastels, I'm talking about colors that are pastel. And so that's something you wanna look into as well and just be aware of if you are really drawn to pastel colors, that can be an issue. Also, go for pigment-based art supplies because you have more of a chance of them being light fast. Dyes by nature are fugitive and will fade. And that includes alcohol markers, sadly. Even the really expensive ones are prone to fading just by nature. So that's something to keep in mind if you like to work with markers and things like that. Of course, you can always sell prints of your work. I'm talking about keeping your originals to be archival, but if you love these supplies and you really enjoy working with them and that's just where your passion is, sell prints of your artwork if you want to sell your artwork. But just be aware that you may put a lot of time and energy into an art piece to have it fade. And so that's basically what this video is about, is awareness. Okay, so the next thing deals with 
using materials that are not specifically made for the use in art. And so the next tip is don't use household items to blend or as fixatives. And that doesn't go for all household items, but I see a lot of art hacks online, especially on TikTok and Reels and things like that, where people are using things like hand lotion to blend their colored pencils, shampoo. Like I've seen some things. I've seen some things <laughs> like olive oil and baby oil. And will they blend your colored pencils? Yes, they will. Will it possibly ruin your artwork over time? Yes, it very well may. And the biggest thing about this is these items are not actually tested by manufacturers for this use. So we have no proof that it's not going to ruin your artwork over time. But there are a lot of people who have complaints about it actually ruining their artwork over time, especially when you're getting into like the oily things that can sink into your paper. It can make your paper brittle. It can yellow things over time. You just want to be very careful. Oils in general are very like finicky to work with when you're blending and things like that. And so if you are going to use a household item to blend your colored pencils, I recommend using something like rubbing alcohol because alcohol has been used in the manufacturing of art supplies. They make blending markers for colored pencils that are alcohol based. And so rubbing alcohol is not going to necessarily brittle your paper over time. It's not going to yellow. It evaporates so fast that it's not really sinking into your paper the same way. And it will blend your colored pencil. So there's an exception there. And along the lines of oils and things like that and blending, I think I should throw in, it's probably not good to blend your artwork with your hands, with your bare hands. Now, this one I even hesitate to mention. We are artists. Our artwork is handmade. So we're going to be handling our artwork with our bare hands. And this is a habit that I still catch myself doing. But we have natural oils on our hands. People use lotion, things like that. And that stuff should not be on your artwork. So you want to have clean hands and you really should minimize the amount that you are using your hands directly to blend things. You could wear gloves and things like that. Obviously, like I said, we're going to be handling things. My hands aren't overly oily, so I still find myself fighting this habit. But some people have really oily hands, and that oil on your hands, not archival with artwork necessarily. Again, to a degree, we're all handling our artwork, so it's going to happen. But just keep it in mind. Also, another... <laughs> Oh, this one's a big one. This is a hack that's all over the internet and it ha it predates the internet. Let me tell you, I'm a 90s girl and this hack was being thrown around when I was a kid and that is to use hairspray as a fixative. Now, does it fix your work? As in, does it make it like the powder or your charcoal or your pencil adhere to the paper more? Yes. Hairspray is sticky. It's sticky. Of course it does. But is it archival? No. No, it is not. There's all kinds of chemicals in hairspray that interact with paper and things like that. It will yellow your work over time. And I am telling you this as somebody who has experienced it firsthand. And it probably doesn't matter the brand. And also, because it's so adhesive, it will make dust stick to your artwork more than a regular fixative will. Because it doesn't dry the same way. It is not made for artwork. So it's not made for that purpose. And so it is made to get something stuck, for sure. But... Let me tell you, I <laughs> I did this when I was a kid because I was taught this by an art teacher. Yes, it will make it so it doesn't smudge, but it turns yellow and it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. Some might take longer than others. And of course, it might have to do with your climate and things like that. Let me tell you, I had an artwork when I was probably, I was a teenager. I was super proud of it. Sprayed it with some, I don't know what brand, probably Aussie because I think that's what my mom used at the time. And it didn't, it didn't smear anymore. It is like banana yellow now. <laughs> like, and so I'm just telling you this. I don't, I don't want to make it so that, I don't want to limit people because I know a lot of this is cost. You know what I mean? A lot of people can't afford to go out and just buy specific art supplies. But I'm telling you, I think a fixative is not that much more expensive. I mean, it might be, but it's worth the investment. And if you are using a fixative on your artwork is because you want to preserve your artwork. That's the whole point of using a fixative. And if the thing that you're using to fix your artwork is going to ruin it over time, then you might as well not even use a fixative. I would wait until you can invest in an actual fixative like 
a workable fixative or spectra fix which is something you can actually spray inside it's not as poisonous as workable fixative something like that i would lay a piece of either tracing paper or glassine or something over it while you store it until you can fix it that's what i would do instead of using hairspray because once the hairspray is on there you can't get it off and that poor paper she ain't gonna like it i'm just saying okay <laughs> On to the next one, and that is talking about paper and things like that, and that is do not use paper that isn't acid-free. And this doesn't just go for your paper. This goes for anything that's going to be in contact with your artwork over time. Tape? Don't use tape that's not acid-free. Don't leave tape on there for very long, but I'll, just make sure your tape's acid-free. Anything that comes in contact with your art ideally should be acid-free. If you're matting your artwork, you want the matting to be acid-free. If you are just starting, obviously your paper should be acid-free. And they do make a an acid testing pen, and I have one. Like, basically, it's purple. You put it on the surface. It'll be purple if it's acid-free. It'll turn yellow if it's not. I'll link that in the description below so you can test items. If you have paper laying around, you have no idea if it's acid-free, you can get one of those testing pens for fairly cheap and test that out. So here's an example of acid-free paper versus paper that's not acid-free. You can see this one. Again, these are really, really old pictures from when I was a kid. This is my dad's friend. But you can see this one was done on regular lined paper, but it's so yellowed because this was not acid-free paper. And then this one has stayed fairly white over the years. But if you look here, this one has started to yellow from where it's been up against the paper that's not acid-free. So this is a good example of why you don't want anything that's not acid-free touching your artwork. And I want to talk a little bit about tape. I have seen a lot of artist hacks when it comes to tape. And you really shouldn't be putting any adhesive on your artwork overall. Like it, you're getting into some really sticky territory there. <laughs> but people like will use whatever they have, right? And I understand that because acid-free tape can be expensive. So the main thing is you want a low tack tape if you can help it and do not leave tape on there for very long. But I have to say, tape is sticky adhesive leaves residue. I saw the other day, I don't remember who had mentioned it. Somebody mentioned using, I can't remember what app it was on. Somebody mentioned using electrical tape on their artwork and I almost screamed. Like I legit almost like, my soul almost left my body. Things like duct tape and electrical tape are the least acid free options you have out there. Like and I, again, the electrical tape, I know firsthand. My dad's a carpenter. I had this stuff laying around as a kid. I grew up poor. I used whatever I could have. And again, when you're learning, have at it, all bets are off. Just be aware of this stuff for future, for, you know, as you're progressing as an artist. Just be aware of these things. We had this project when I was in seventh grade. Actually, they had it shortly before I moved to the school that I moved to in seventh grade. They had done a project where they took half a magazine page of a model and they taped it down to their page and then they used the other half to draw the other side of the model. So basically you had half the model's face and then you drew the other half as practice for portraiture. And again, that had happened just before I moved there, but they had told me about this project. I thought that was the coolest thing. So I went home and did it on my own. All I had was <laughs> electrical tape or that's the, the first tape I came across or something like that. And I just rolled it up, put it on the back of that magazine page and let me tell you that lady I don't even know if I I think I finally removed the tape but there was a hole there you could see a black square coming through her nose within like five years because the tape was eating through the paper <laughs> do not put that on your artwork so I dug out some of my old work and I found the one I was talking about with the black tape and you can see I didn't end up removing it because it was tearing I thought that I I know I knew I had tried to remove the tape but it it tore so you can see it coming right through and I actually did this later than seventh grade the project I think was in seventh grade but I did mine um, probably a couple years after because I held on to that idea for a while but look at this and then the drawing paper you can see the black tape is eating right through the drawing paper too so this is why you don't want to use things like duct tape or black tape duct tape is horrendous as well my dad had a friend who used to use duct tape to eat the warts off of his hands. He would just stick duct tape to them and it would kill warts. 
don't put that on your artwork. An adhesive, like I said, leaves residue. It's sticky. That's what it's there to do. So even if you just tape your watercolor paper down with it, when you peel it up, that residue could be there forever. And you may not even see it. And it could be working at like eating away at your watercolor paper. So I'm just, just be aware of these things. I've also seen the trick people have mentioned um, to make your tape low tack, stick it to your clothes. You don't know what could be on your clothes. Then you're sticking that to your artwork. Now, again, if it's quick, it may not be as big of an issue. But if you're taping down your colored pencil piece, or you're taping down a watercolor piece and it's a really extensive piece. Like some of my colored pencil work has taken over 20 hours over a span of like a month because I also work a day job and it has stayed taped down to my surface, right? So if I wasn't using acid-free tape, that's a long time for that tape to be just sitting on my artwork. So these are just things to consider. Again, if you're still learning and you're really desperate and you don't have a lot of money, okay, but just be very careful and be aware that down the line, your artwork might have some issues. Also in a scrapbook from when I was a kid, this tape is just regular masking tape, but it's not acid free. So if you can see how it's yellowed and brittle and that's on my artwork. <laughs> so that's an issue. And then here there is some um, just regular scotch tape and you can see how that's discolored compared to the other stuff around it as well. So that's starting to go too. So this is why we like to use acid-free tape on our artwork because it's it's getting bad. And look, look what it's done to what's below it. Look what it's done to the drawing. Something also along the lines of surfaces and things like that that I wanted to throw in there and wrap into this same tip is that when you are working on canvas, you want to make sure that your canvas is primed for the materials you're using it for. Otherwise, you might have problems with adhesion or cracking of your materials later on. For instance, if you have a canvas that is only primed for oil, you're going to only want to use oil paint on that. You shouldn't put acrylic over oil or anything like that. That can cause issues. Most canvases that are pre-primed are usually primed for both acrylic and oil. Those ones are okay, but you just want to be aware of this with how your surface is primed and things like that, depending on what materials you are using. And that leads into my next tip. And that is when doing mixed media, don't layer without putting thought into what materials should go where. Be aware of how certain materials interact with one another. For instance, you don't want to put something water-based over oil-based or water-based over wax-based, especially if you're trying to get full coverage. Like if you put watercolor over crayon or, and a lot of us did this trick as a resist, right? Crayon wax acts as a resist for water-based media. So if you put watercolor over your colored pencils or a crayon, it's going to resist. Now you can use that as a mixed media technique if that's what you're intending to do. But you want to be aware of that. If you're trying to cover the colored pencil with a water-based media, it's not going to work. It's going to resist that water. So if, say you messed up in colored pencil and you just want to paint over it, it may not work. That wax and oil-based media is going to resist the water-based medium that you put over it. And in that same note, you don't ever want to paint acrylic over oil paint. Acrylic dries super fast. Oil paint dries super slow. And so the acrylic's going to dry. And then when the oil paint below oxidizes and finally starts to harden up, it's going to crack that layer above, which is one reason why even within oil painting, they say fat over lean. Anything that has more oil on the top should go on the top. It's the whole thing. You, you don't want the top layers of your oil painting, even if you're just working with oil, to dry before the layers below because it will crack. And so these are all things to be aware of. Know your materials, know how they work with one another, and also kind of just know the working order, even if you're not working mixed media. Okay, so the next thing the, that kind of trumps like all of these, after your artwork is done, don't hang your artwork in direct sunlight or in a moist environment. Like, I know a lot of people who want to hang artwork in the bathroom. Wallpaper doesn't even hang well in the bathroom. Like, you shouldn't, like, moisture gets, especially if it's like a colored pencil piece, moisture will warp stretcher bars on canvas. Moisture will warp your paper. And it causes all kinds of issues. Mildew 
and mold. You don't want that on your artwork. So don't hang your artwork in an overly moist environment. Don't hang it above your sink. Don't hang it in your bathrooms. If you want decor in your bathroom, do a print. Don't do an original. And it goes without saying, because we've talked about fugitive colors, artwork will fade if it's hung in direct sunlight. And even the best of pigments can't withstand certain sunlight. You need to be very careful. Never put your artwork directly across from a window or right in direct light. And yes, so that is, that's that. Oh, and on the moisture thing, I should have mentioned back when I was talking about framing, this is another trick for archivalness. So I guess it's just like a little extra. When you're framing your artwork, anything on paper should be matted. And again, you want an acid-free mat, but you want a barrier between the glass of your frame and your paper artwork. Because if the if any moisture gets in that frame and the paper is pushed up against the glass, it could stick to that glass and it could cause all kinds of issues. Plus, if you're working in something like pastel or graphite or something like that, that also will rub off on the glass and cause issues over time. So that's kind of another bonus tip. So yeah, those are the five things not to do if you want your artwork to be archival. If you have any other tips, below, like mention it in the comments below. I hope that you found this video to be helpful because these are things I wish I had known as a self-taught artist. And we make beautiful artwork. We spend a lot of time. We pour our soul into it. It'd be great to have it last, right? So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. If you liked this video, please hit that like button, share it, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.